It's the Natural Sports Gamers Online, and we're here with the one and only Cody Launchball here at EA Sports. He, he's the uh, creative director for CFM. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the great modes that we all love. Uh, we're excited to talk to you, and um, tell us a little about some of the new features and stuff uh, for Madden 16. All right, well, you know, you guys have all seen the press release. Uh, we've got a bunch of new features in CFM. It, rather than talk about the press release, why don't you tell me the questions you want to know about? What, what deep dive stuff do you want to know? Sure, sure. Um, we're really excited about the, the weekly goals that they have. Uh, for this year um, and how you guys have enhanced that and changed that uh, with the weekly goals and some of the uh, the, the drive, uh, the per drive goals you have going now uh, this year, okay. which are really cool. All right, yeah, so we have overhauled the goal system. We do. We did make some big changes to the weekly goals. Last year, all the weekly goals were kind of fire and forget one-off weeks. This year, the weekly goals, they can uh, tell a little bit of a story. They can chain together. Like if, you have a, if you're a, a young running back or you have a young running back on your team, depending on how you're playing, and you have, you're starting to have a breakout year, you'll get a series of goals that's called breakout running back that start to tell, help you improve and give you more and more XP as you achieve harder and harder goals throughout your season. Sort of how like uh, any breakout running back might have, have happened to him, he'll get more and more carries, more and more opportunities to prove himself. This is trying to kind of uh, mirror and, and mimic that effect that happens in reality through like a gameplay mechanic. That's awesome. So every different teams in the CFM, they might have totally all different sets of goals for the different right. players. Absolutely, yeah. No, it, 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 it's dependent on what's happening to you inside of your CFN. I apologize, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the dynamic uh, game goals. Uh, those are those are each pertain to the specific drive, and we have this new uh, presentation feature called feature called a drive starter, and it's a the drive starter looks at um, the situation of the game, what's happened in the past in the game, uh, kind of like the story of this drive and starts to tell a, a presentation story and an audio story about what's going on. Well, the drive goals hook into that feature and it, for the most part, they're gonna piggyback on that and tell the, the same story. So if they're talking about getting the game started or get the quarterback hot, you might get a goal to com complete three passes in a row to get your quarterback going. Oh, wow. So build his confidence. You literally can gain confidence now while in the game. So that's also tied a little bit to the commentary. Is it actually in there a little bit tied yeah. into that? Well, we don't actually say like get your drive goal and you'll get confidence because that'd be stupid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what we do is uh, we def we tell it in the in the um, in the fiction of the football game, right? So you, Nance might talk about how they really got to get the ball going. Uh, I'm sure they're going to look to to throw the ball here to get the game get the game started. Yeah. You know, the, he'll say things like that. Um, that line probably doesn't exist, but something like that does uh, to. Uh, make the game feel like it's really more contextual. It knows more about what's going on, and the con adding in those drive goals with it helps you as the gamer kind of be a part of that world. Uh, we're really super excited about. Since we saw that drive goals feature, we thought it was really cool. Another way to get build up confidence and get some XP for your players in the game, which is awesome. Um, so about like the one thing I was concerned about with that though was that do you think that those drive goals would kind of shape? how the player plays the game, as in, let's say if he's more of a runner, and you're saying, you know, you need to pass for 50 yards in this drive or whatever it is. Right. Do you feel that you're kind of shaping the gameplay within the game by doing that? Uh, if you listen to the drive goals a little bit, um, but the drive goals really are, are not there to force you to play the, the way you want to play. It's really there to help you augment your team. So if you've got a guy who's low on confidence, and you know by, oh man, I got to help this guy, he needs confidence boost, so I'm going to go ahead and do the drive goal for my wide receiver. I'm going to throw him these three balls, get him that plus one confidence, and help him get out of the slump he's in. Uh, that's that's a, that's a real thing. Yeah. It may not be literally complete three passes to Larry Fitzgerald to get him out of his slump, but if you're playing, I'm a Cardinal fan, by the way. If you're playing with the Cardinals, uh, that's not that may not be what happens with, in reality with Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald, but they will try and get him involved in the game. They will try and get him some. Uh, some isolated catches, some easier catches to get them back started up again. It, you know, it happens all the time in reality. We're trying to mimic it and kind of represent that with a little bit of a game feature. Another big thing you guys got going this year is you kind of redid the scouting yeah. a little bit and how you can um, uh, you can take away and see the first three uh, portions of the scouting. And then um, could you talk a little bit about the, the scouting features and how you guys improved and reworked that? Sure. So, I, I mean, as you sh I'm sure you know, Last year, the scouting was, uh, you had all the, the attributes available to you and yeah. you kind of would like pick and choose what you wanted to reveal and you spent once to get his letter grade, you spent a second time to get the actual number, uh, and then you could spend on whatever attribute you wanted. Yeah. Well, the problem that that gives you is that as a hardcore guy, you know, I only care about these two traits. 
and it's like development trait and speed. Yeah. Everything else doesn't matter because all I want is that. So it made it um, pretty easy to go do scouting. The other thing that made it really easy was the idea that uh, you could store up all your scouting points all year long, and then right before the draft, after everything's happened to you, you've, you know, you've lost or gained players in free agency, um, guys have retired, uh, you, know, you, you could or couldn't pick somebody else up in, the, uh, in free agency, so you know, like, okay, this is exactly what I need. You have the perfect plan with the perfect amount of scouting points to go get the perfect guy. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, it's exactly what everybody who plays in a league like you, that's exactly what they do. So we wanted to make it more like reality. And I know you could argue that this isn't more like reality, and it's not. It's the game iteration or the game interpretation of reality. So you've got- Oh, it's the closest thing. Yeah, you know, reality is like, you gotta hire a bunch of scouts and you gotta send them out. You gotta learn to trust that scout. That scout's gotta give you great information. It's gonna be a bunch of written feedback, numbers, charts, graphs, sentences. That's not realistic. Well, it, with all of that, even in real life, they still don't know and they yeah. still get it wrong every year despite spending millions of dollars on scouting, so. Right, and, and that's not really realistic in the sense of what you could do in the scope of a video game. Uh, to expect that you know, millions of people would be able to, to parse all this information and make sense of it and then go like, I know what to do in the draft. Uh, it's, not, it's not an easy thing. So, excuse me, I'm gonna take a quick drink of water. All right, sorry. So what we did was uh, simplify the system, simplify the problem, and make it a game, uh, a game mechanic. So now you can only find out three things about every, every single player in the draft. And those three things are his top three attributes. Uh, if, you re if you reveal all the third one, you also get his true draft grade. So he's, we have a projected draft place, so that just like, I mean, that might be like a, you might look at the projection as like a Kuiper, right? His draft board, the big board. Um, but uh oh, the, you said the mag board. That's a that's we'll, a magic word there. Oh, well, we'll there. watch out for that one. Go ahead. We'll get, I mean, I don't know if you, see, you saw Shop's video. Yeah, okay. So we'll get there. Uh, but with the true draft, true draft rating, it tells you a lot closer where he he really will be drafted or really should be drafted, not will. So the the advantages by getting that third piece of information. You see this guy, it says he's got first round talent. You're like, you get his first thing, he's got like an A and catching traffic. You're like, oh, cool. Well, he may have like a B and a B and something else. And you might think that's great. But that true draft thing might say he's like a third round guy. Now, if the, somebody else didn't reveal all three, they don't know he's actually a third round guy. They might get him in the first round and he's kind of a bust. Reach. Yeah, it's a reach. Um, and, and all that, those little bits of games you can play forcing you to draft or to scout every single week. You can't just save up all your points to the end and spend them all at once. You have to like really think about what you're gonna need, plan ahead. Yeah. Think like, okay, my, my defensive tackles are getting old. Uh, I'm, I'm a Cardinal guy, right? Tackles are getting old. I need to start looking for tackles in the draft. I've got one good end, the other one's okay. I'm okay, okay there. I need a good middle linebacker. So I'm like starting, how do I build my, my draft? And then I might make a totally different move in free agent. There might be a great free agent I can go pick up to solve one of those problems. And now the scouting I did, I might still use that, but it falls down in priority. Yeah, it makes it tough. Uh, also, you added the combine, uh, which you had those combine, but those, those free, those, that's open to everyone, that, right. those combine. Uh, what's what's kind of, that's a cool thing. I'm definitely happy you added that, guys added that. But what's stopping guys for kind of min-maxing and just going for the fastest, you know, biggest guys in the combine and not looking yeah. at a lot of the other uh, stats? Well, just because they're the fastest player doesn't mean they're going to be a great fit or a great player on your team. They could be a super fast wide receiver with no catch rating, yeah. no route running, no awareness. You know, all those things play into how he plays when you're not controlling him. So it's, it, I would say that, yes, it's nice and yes, it adds something. But in the real draft, everybody has combine information. You know how fast that guy is. You know, you, it's kind of silly to force you to spend scouting points to find out what you can find out after the combine. So it, it's it's real, it's cool. Um, I know it's something you guys have asked for, so that's what we did. That's 